When it comes to finding valuable stock investment opportunities, it is really important for you to be able to understand how it is that you need to assess a company's financial health. This will protect you from making the wrong investment decisions and it will allow you to find good investment decisions in the first place. In this video, I want to share with you how it is that you can assess a company's financial health and not just that, but also what are some of the key ratios and key things that you need to understand in order to perform this effectively. And if you stay until the end of the video, I'm going to share with you a way in which you can get a ton of metrics and financial information right on your Excel and Google Sheet spreadsheet automatically. Okay, so the first step to analyze a company's financial health is to get the company's financial statements. In this case, what I recommend is that you use the Y Sheets add-on for Excel and Google sheets so that you can get the data automatically on your spreadsheet there's many different ways of getting financial data but this is the one that we recommend now once you have the company's financial statements in this case what you will see is the income statement the balance sheet and the cash flow statement and all of this data goes all the way back to 2004 so this is great because we get a really good comprehensive view of the financial statements historically and and these are the most important financial statements that you can analyze. I mean, there's other information such as key metrics, financial growth metrics, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. But this is the most important thing to look at. Now, when it comes to analyzing the financial statements, why is this important? Why is this important to analyze a company's financial health? The reason is very simple. With the information contained in the financial statements, there's two main things things that you can do. One of them is to analyze at a really good level the current financial state of a company, which is really great and something that I think is absolutely necessary to make a good investment decision. And then the other thing is that you can also use this information so that you can project into the future. So if you're doing evaluation or anything like that, you can project some numbers into the future using the information from the current state as well as the past. So for example, in this case, we have a DCF template. So if I change the company from Apple to Microsoft, you will see how the data will automatically update for you. And once you have a template like this set up, you can use the information in the financial statements, such as in this case, the revenue growth, as well as pretty much any other metric that you can imagine and use that in your projections right here for future years. Now, this number Numbers are just dummy numbers so don't think that these are my actual assumptions for this company they're just placeholders but you can change this information right here and then that will update your projections and then based on these projections that's where you can then calculate the intrinsic value or the current value of a particular company which you can see the numbers right here so this is why it is really important to understand and be able to assess a company's financial health now that you you understand that what I want to do is just briefly walk you through the importance of each financial statement and what each financial statement is and how it is that you can get value out of it. So starting off with the income statement, the income statement is one of the most simple financial statements, but at the same time, one of the most powerful ones to analyze. And the way that an income statement works is very simple. You have the revenue or what they call the top line, and this is basically how much much money the company has made over a particular period of time so in this case if you look right here you see 2022 so this is the actual annual data for Apple and this is how much money the company made during that period after that what the income statement does is it breaks down all kinds of different expenses that the company had to incur in order to generate this revenue and then once you take the revenue minus all the different expenses at the end of the day you have the net income and this is the money that was the actual profit of that particular company so for the income statement it is really important to understand where this revenue where this money is coming from and also what are the main expenses of the company and why are these expenses being incurred by the company so the expenses this information you can get from here as well as coupling this with reading the company's financial annual 
report, which is really important because they include notes as to what it is that they're doing and why certain expenses were made. For the revenue, something really powerful that you could do is, again, using Y sheets, you can simply enter the company. You can simply enter the company followed by segment revenues as well as the year or period that you would like to get data for. And what this is going to do, as you can see right here, is it's going to give you the breakdown of how, in this case, Apple made that much money. So you can see the breakdown in terms of how much of that money came from Mac, service, wearables, home and accessories, iPad, iPhone, etc. Now you can also get a breakdown in terms of the geographic so if you do geographic revenues you will also get that breakdown but this also helps to understand the income statement a little bit better and something that you should know is that this is available for companies that report to the sec and that provide this information to the sec now we're moving on to the balance sheet the balance sheet is really important to understand the current financial position of a company at any given period of time so at this particular time, what does the balance sheet of the company look like? That is what the balance sheet tells you. And it's basically a snapshot of what the company owns. So that is considered assets. And this is all this section right here. So you can see that there's current assets. And these are assets that can be more easily sold and turned into cash. There are non-current assets, which are more difficult to get rid of and turn into cash. So this would be like different properties and stuff stuff like that that's like harder to sell and overall this gives you the total assets which are basically financial benefits that the company owns and then on the other side of the balance sheet you have the liabilities again there's current liabilities which are liabilities or things that need to be paid within a relatively short period of time and then there's liabilities that need to be paid later all of that together gives you the total liabilities and then after that what you do in the balance sheet is you take everything that you own everything that you owe and that gives you the leftover which is also known as the stockholders equity now to understand the income statement and the balance sheet a little bit better there's different key metrics and ratios that are going to make this process a lot easier and this is something that i'm about to get to next after we analyze the cash flow but you can also skip to that part of that video the last Last financial statement that we have is the cash flow statement and the cash flow statement is really important because as they say in business cash is king so you could technically be profitable from the income statement perspective but you could also have at the same time negative cash and you can run out of cash as a company very quickly and when you run out of cash that basically means that you're getting closer and closer to the death of that company so it's really important to be able to monitor the cash flow of a particular company to make sure they can keep operating as well as make the investments that they need in order to stay competitive and also increase their competitive advantage so the cash flow statement divides this into three different parts so first we have the cash flow generated by the operating activities so basically you take the net income and then you add or subtract all the different categories that you can see right here that either add cash or subtract from this cash that you generated from your net income that provides you with the cash that you generated by your operating activities after that we have the cash breakdown that was used to make investments and you can see some of the categories right here that you can classify for different investments so when you see a negative number on the cash flow statement means it's a cash outflow it's an investment that was made when you see a positive number like right here it means that you actually got that cash flow and how did you get that cash flow well in this case is because you sold some investments that you had for apple right here and then the last section of the cash flow statement is the cash flow used to finance activities so this means like paying debt or also getting money in the form of debt or anything like that now let's get into the ratios that i mentioned to you that make analyzing the company 
company's financial health a lot easier. So there's different kinds of ratios. We have liquidity ratios, solvency ratios, profitability ratios, efficiency ratios. And I'm gonna walk you through the main ratios that you can use, although there's like tons of them uh, for each category and how it is that they're calculated and why they're helpful. So starting off with the liquidity ratios, these types of ratios allow you to get an answer to the question, can this company pay its bills or its debt? And to answer this question, we have two main ratios. We have the current ratio and the quick ratio. The current ratio is calculated by taking the current assets of a company that we talked about on the balance sheet divided by the current liabilities. So what happens with this number is that if you find that you get an answer greater than one, this is generally considered a good thing because that means that with your current assets, you're able to cover your current liabilities. And obviously the higher of a number you have, the better it is because you're in a much better position to cover up for those financial obligations that you have in the form of the current liabilities. Now for the quick ratio, this number is very similar, except that if you look at the balance sheet and you look at the current assets, the quick ratio, it's a more conservative because it only takes into account items of the balance sheet in this section right here like the cash and equivalents as well as things like the net receivables moving on to the solvency ratios the question that they help us answer is how stable is the company financially on a long-term basis and for that we have the debt to equity and the interest coverage ratio the debt to equity ratio is very simple it's just like the name of this metric you basically take the total debt of the company and you divide it by the total equity. Of course, the less debt to equity that you have, the better off and the more stable the company is because it has less debt and less things to worry about because if something happens, then in that case, the company will have a good amount of equity to be able to finance its debt, so it'll be okay. And obviously the opposite applies. The other ratio is the interest coverage ratio and for this, you basically just take the EBIT and you divide it by the interest expense of the company. So this allows you to know if the company can pay its interest expense based on the money, the EBIT, which is essentially the operating income that the company is generating. If the company can do that, then that's a good thing. If it can do that, that's a bad thing because it's going to continue to burn cash to be able to pay this interest expense right here. Moving on to the profitability ratios we have the gross profit margin the net profit margin and the return on equity and this allows us to know how effective is a company at generating profits for the shareholders so the way that these ratios are calculated is pretty much very similar so the gross profit you basically take the gross profit and you divide this by the company's revenue then for the net profit margin you take the net income and you divide this by the company's revenue and then the return on equity you take the net income and you divide it by the equity or the total equity of the company so the higher of a ratios that you have the better off the company is at generating profits for shareholders because they're essentially able to keep more money per dollar of revenue that the company generates so for example if a company has a net profit margin of 30 percent that basically means that for every dollar that's generated by the company, the company gets to keep 30 cents of that dollar, which is generally considered a good ratio. Now, these ratios, they really depend on the industry and the type of business that you're analyzing. The last type of ratios that we have are the efficiency ratios. And these ratios allows us to find out how effective is a company's management at managing the company's assets. So in this case, we have the assets asset turnover ratio and the inventory turnover ratio. For the asset turnover ratio, we basically take the net sales and we divide this by the average total 
assets. What this tells us is that if we have a high number of sales, but we also have a high number average total assets, then that means that the company is not as effective as it could be. The most effective companies, but again, this depends on the industry, are able to generate a lot of sales with very few assets. That is the mark or one of the marks of a great company. For the inventory turnover ratio, you basically take the cogs, the cost of gold sold, and then divide that by the average inventory. So a higher number again means that the company is more efficient because it basically means that it can take the company's inventory and sell it a lot faster. Just like I promised to you in the beginning of the video, what I want to do is share with you how it is that you can get some of these ratios automatically calculated for you for a list of companies. So as you can see, we have a whole bunch of ratios here. And with Y sheets, the cool thing is that pretty much all of these ratios that you can see can be automatically calculated for you. In this case, I just picked a few of them for each category, just pick one basically for each category. So that way you can see how this works in a simple way. This list is a list of semiconductor stocks. And in this case, we have 24 stocks, but this list could be as big as you want pretty much up to a thousand tickers. So once you have a list like this and you have the ratios that you would like to get, all you need to do is use this white screener function right here, select a list of stocks that you would like to get data for, click here, and then the parameters that you would like to get, click here. By default, this current ratio debt to equity and inventory turnover ratios are going to be based on the last year of financial data. You could also also get the last quarter and as well as TTM which you can see I have here for the return on equity once you have this simply click on get data and what's gonna happen is that automatically as you can see really fast you're going to be able to get all the data right here and at any time you could rename this and then uh, you could just simply click refresh live data and this will allow your data to refresh for you from here you can also apply any filters that you would like so you could sort the data by companies that have the highest return on equity just as an example now you know how to assess a company's financial health and most importantly how to do it effectively if you've enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification zone so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this that's going to allow you to take your investing game to the next level i'll see you in the next one